afternoon everybody Ty metalhead weatherman here hopefully everyone's doing well it's crazy to think that we're already towards the end of august here college football season starting we've even had a few mornings where we were feeling like fall here but with those cooler mornings and the existence of slightly cooler air mass up against a warmer air mass i'm pretty sure you know where i'm going with this we're going to be dealing with the chance of severe weather down the line you look on the screen here you'll see that we now have three days of slight risk ahead from sunday through tuesday this is mainly going to be comprised of areas that are around the northern plains the midwest and also the ohio valley and great lakes over the next three days main threats with these threats will be damaging winds and large hail tornadoes are not out of the question but pattern isn't super conducive in the short term in regards to tornado outbreaks so there's some good news to be had there nonetheless though we'll go ahead and get into the models here to take a look at exactly what we'll be dealing with so today we're using the gfs operational run here to get a look at the weather setup over the course of the next 72 maybe even further beyond that point really i usually don't like using this for the short range severe weather setups i'd rather use something like the hrr but considering the fact that we're looking at multiple days this model has been giving me the best look, so that's what we're going with here. This this is our troublemaker right here. This is our catalyst. This storm system right here, This you can see the troughing occurring here. And it's going to be right along where what we would call the ski jump region in this area where we would have these storms begin to develop right on the uh, upslope of the trough here. You also see this ridge coming into play here. This is going to help uh, induce storm development as we get into not only tomorrow and beyond, but also even today but the threat's going to be a little bit more marginal today. So we get into tomorrow's threat, much more pronounced look here. You can see our storms likely to develop across this region here. What we're looking for in this region here is looking at these uh, ISO bars here. You can see the little ripple right here and this uh, concentrated area where you see the uh, contour forming into a circle. This is likely where we're going to have a short wave, which is going to induce lift and allow those storms to pop here with the uh, dew points and temperatures across this area here being in the mid 70s in some places even. This is gonna allow for these storms to really grow quick. And it's gonna be also ample amounts of instability as well. So as we continue to go forward here, this is heading into Monday now. You can see that threat begin to transition off to the east a little bit. We're now looking at areas such as maybe Minnesota coming into the mix in regards to Monday. Setup looks a little bit more pronounced here, even though that low pressure area right here starting to deteriorate i do think that there is a chance on both sunday and monday where we could have an isolated tornado or two and then also after that even when the storm system is or i would anticipate it to leak to uh, weaken below severe limits i would expect a remnant mcs left over which will still bring showers and storms into areas like minnesota and also wisconsin then the tuesday setup I'm thinking that in the adjacent area of where this trough is going to continue to deteriorate, we might get some storms to fire off over here towards maybe even the Chicago area. And as we continue to go forward after that point, as we head into Wednesday, we have our next storm system, which we're gonna have to be dealing with. We're gonna be keeping a close eye on that. I think we're gonna see very similar areas affected by that. Storm track is really kind of favoring more so the Northern US, which is typical considering all the other parameters we have such as the La Nina pattern that we've had going on for the last month or so. So heads up if you're in the Northern Plains, you're in the Midwest or in the Ohio Valley here. We're gonna look at a lower level of the atmosphere as well to go along with this. And what we're gonna do is try to really hone in on where those short waves are. Now, like I said, tonight's setup not quite as pronounced. Tomorrow definitely looks a little bit more potent. Even so, mid-level shear not that impressive so I, that's what i also think will help keep that tornado threat kind of mitigated unless you're up towards maybe i would say far northern parts of north dakota maybe you could get something here it really just depends on how that low level jet acts and really from what i've been seeing i wouldn't anticipate too much to come of it like i said really during this time of year it's hard to get any super stout tornadic setups not saying that they can't happen or that you can't get a uh, odd tornado or two or even a strong one, but this setup just really doesn't 
favor that. So I wouldn't expect it to yield a whole lot there. Now, as we go into Monday afternoon, we see a pretty similar thing going on here, this time more so towards South Dakota, Iowa, maybe Minnesota here is where we would expect storm initiation. Iowa probably is going to be the point of interest in regards to in regards to maybe Tuesday. This threat may shift south. It may push a little further to the north, but this is where I think our point of interest is going to be more so, I would say, right here. I don't want to click this sounding, though. That being said, let's keep it moving here. And we'll get into Tuesday. Taking a look at the short wave on Tuesday. Not quite as pronounced. But I do think that over here, maybe towards central Illinois, could be a point of interest. Severe weather threat could be conditional, I would say, at this point. Just based off looking at the mid-level data. Like I said, low-level jet just really isn't going to be uh, prominent over these next few days. So, like I said, I really think the threat is going to revolve around damaging winds. The other wild card is this uh, ridge that we have over here towards the deep south. It's also going to keep the temperatures warm for this region, but we may have a shifting flow here due to that deteriorating low that we're going to have up here towards Canada along with this region here. So, somewhere along that line, we could get enough shear to get some storms to fire here. Even though it's not necessarily the best look on models, it's something you always have to keep an extra close eye on here. But in any case, let's keep the ball rolling here and take a look at Wednesday to go along with it. So here's our next storm system that we're keeping an eye on. Once again, we're looking over towards the Dakotas and pretty similar setup. Storms look like they could form a little bit later into the evening on Wednesday. Like I said, still a lot of a lot of questions left to be answered for Wednesday in particular, so I'll probably uh, follow up on this setup soon as we get towards the end of the week and beyond that point. But overall, like we said before, pretty active storm track out towards the northern states here. Now looking at low-level jet, this is heading into tomorrow. Like I said before, just not really much anything to go with in regards to low-level jet for Monday or even Sunday. Tuesday kind of piques my interest just a little bit, but the main things I try to look for when it comes to tornado threat will be more southerly winds. Winds coming from the south pushing up to the north. However, don't really uh, we don't really get much of that. The next setup though on Wednesday does kind of pique my interest ever so slightly. The timing I think is going to be a key factor because if we can get this low level jet to kick in a little bit later, that could increase the tornado threat. I did say in some of the uh, later videos where we started talking about this date about a week or so in advance that these next couple storm systems would interest me. This tail end Charlie here, I guess you would call it at this point around the 28th might be the one to watch. But we'll have to, of course, follow up and see what the models end up doing with it to go from that point onward here. But definitely something to keep an eye on here as we go further along into the, the week. Now, one thing that we already know for a fact, one thing that has, that's pretty much been a constant all year is we've had plenty of moisture to work with, whether it's to the uh, east here or over towards the Midwest, we've had ample moisture. And it's a key component with severe weather. You can see as we head into Sunday afternoon, plenty of moisture available here towards the Dakotas dew points in the 70 degree range even the mid 70s at this point so very ripe atmosphere plenty of moisture to work with same can be said for monday at this point very impressive area of 70 degree plus dew points you can even see that heading into tuesday here again that's over towards right where we mentioned before central illinois here just south of chicago could be a point of interest there and then as we head into Wednesday, look at how that moisture is getting pulled in by that next storm system. What really intrigues me with this look in particular as well is that dry air that's rushing in behind that. That could become an extra point of lift if things come together, if the uh, timing of this improves. Like I said, the timing of this storm system is really going to be a key to what kind of hazards we have. I still think we could have a damaging wind threat, maybe even a significant one. But I would not be surprised if a couple extra tornadoes come into the mix here if we continue to progress with this look here. 
like I said, 100 hours, 111 hours is a long way to go. So things can very quickly change on models. We could uptrend or we could downtrend. Typically during this time of year, we often see a few downtrends, but nonetheless, something to keep an eye on over here. Of course, also looking at the surface temperatures here. Like I said, towards the middle of the country is where the most of the hot air is going to be. So we're going to have some crazy surface temperatures. We're going to be dealing with plenty of 80s, 90s, and even triple digits as we head into Sunday here. So like I said, all that heat with that moisture, it's going to make for a very uncomfortable day. And it's also going to make for a lot of energy for these storms to work with. So a lot of them we're going to be uh, paying attention to as we head into Sunday. Then same thing can be expected for Monday. Triple digits, even the 110s, maybe even pushing to the 100 teens here as we get into Monday. Tuesday is going to be no different. And even as we get towards Wednesday, we see more of that hot air dominating over our areas of interest for severe weather so those are our main elements that we typically look for and usually when we look at something like the dew points and temperatures being exceptionally warm with a uh, with a good point of lift like what we were looking at earlier usually this translate in this translates into instability here so this is a look at our instability, our convective available potential energy. I'm going to take this into a full view here because I could try and do this region by region, but it would just make for a longer video. But this is what we're looking at as we head into the day tomorrow. So put it in perspective for you, most severe weather you would need about a thousand joules per kilogram to get that going, along with other ingredients, of course. Around here, as we head into the afternoon tomorrow, we have cape values that are nearing 3000 joules per kilogram so like i said pretty ideal environment in regards to energy for severe storms to be concerned if these can take off then man it's going to be a pretty busy afternoon for this region here and these values actually increase as we go later into the evening so as we uh, get towards let's say twilight here for this region could be a little bit later because I'm always thinking of Zulu to, in uh, comparison to Eastern time. This will be 8 o'clock my time, so let's say 7. Sun hasn't really set yet, so still plenty of uh, warm, unstable air for this for this uh, storm system to work with here. Go towards Tuesday. It's going to be a pretty similar deal here. Like I said, a big factor, not the determining factor, but a big couple of factors will be those surface temps and those dew points being a point of interest for that increased amount of instability but we're gonna have plenty of it over the course of the next few days here this is also why I think Chicago still could be a point of interest while the forcing and the wind profile isn't quite as impressive on Tuesday here so we go toward as we uh, look towards the evening hours here a lot of instability can still allow for those storms to fire uh, storms uh, severe weather setup sometimes can be that situation where if one set of parameters isn't that impressive if you have enough of an of uh, other parameters you can kind of overcome and then of course here's our little sneak preview of Wednesday here still plenty of ample instability and we'll probably see an uptrend with this I'm really interested to see what uh, convective models start to show whenever we get within range of those which will probably be a couple of days from now so last but not least let's go ahead and take a look at what our simulated radar could look like with Sunday's coverage it's not going to be widespread I would expect storms to kind of form here and there I think it's going to be more so an isolated event wouldn't expect big numbers with reports St still could be significant nonetheless and as we get towards Monday uh, coverage is a little bit more impressive nothing really catching my eye in regards to significance with that we could still see a pretty impressive line of storms and a and a uh, remnant MCS to follow up behind that as we get into Tuesday morning. And then we see things start to take off once again, Tuesday evening. And then it's pretty much gonna be rinse and repeat as we head into Wednesday. So a lot to keep an eye on here over the course of the next several days and beyond even. So we'll be keeping an eye on this. Of course, Tropic Update videos will be coming soon. So. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Make sure you have that bell on to be notified of the latest updates here. 
With that being said, you guys have a good rest of your Saturday. I'll see you again soon. It's been Tired Metalhead Weatherman signing out.